Welcome back to the 13th episode of Real College Reviews. As always, I'm your host, Jude Bazeman. Today, I'm joined by my friend, Tommy O'Hearn. Tommy, introduce yourself a little bit more. Hey, guys. I'm Tommy O'Hearn. Um, I'm a sophomore at the University of Scranton. Uh, right now, I'm a chemistry business major. It might change in the near future. And I uh, play club hockey at the university. Great. Sounds like you're very involved. Chemistry business. We'll definitely get more into that. I'm interested to see exactly what that is and why it might change as well. But first thing I always ask on, on these episodes is, why did you choose Scranton and what were some other colleges you were considering? So why I chose Scranton, I was, I was looking for a small small campus, mm-hmm. wasn't looking for Greek life, nothing like that, and it's exactly what I got with Scranton. Every single other one of my schools that I applied to, they were all, they were all small. I think the biggest one was Rowan, and I thought it, or yeah, it was Rowan, and Visiting there, I was like, I'm going to get lost on this oh, campus. Oh, yeah, it's a big school. Well, like, I mean, Syracuse is pretty yeah. pretty big, it's, too. Yeah. It's weird with Syracuse. Like, the, the student body, it's, I think, around 18, 19, 20,000, something like that. Okay. So very large. The campus itself. It's small? It's pretty small for that, that okay. student body size. But we, I had Matt on earlier in the week, and he was talking about Rowan and just how big it was. And I've been yeah. to Scranton's campus, too. It's very compact. I mean, yeah, yeah. how's the it, walk? It's it's really walkable, it's, right? Yeah, from my dorm last year to, I guess my longest class was not even ten minutes. Oh wow! But I mean, it's there's no like like I guess Rutgers you're busing. Yeah. So on yeah. a bus you're gonna get the AC or the heat <laughs> that the bus provides. These the walks during the winter they were kind of brutal, but I mean. That's like the smallest complaint that I have. About yeah, that, you I know. mean, you it's, bundle it's up. Crazy. Yeah, like I leave my room maybe five minutes before some of the classes and make it on time. Like it's just good like that. You and know? that's a, that's something at a small school that you have that at a bigger school like you said, Rutgers, where you got to take a bus maybe thirty minutes away on another side of the huge campus. And during finals week, I heard about the whole debacle of them not having the bus. The oh my! I forgot to about to, that too. To class. Yeah. And that's Scranton. You don't have to worry about that just because it's so Not small. Yeah. And I guess we'll ask about the weather too in Scranton. Kind of similar to New Jersey. I mean, did you get more snow? Like, like it, it's if anything, it's five degrees cooler. So not that big of a difference. Not that big of a difference, and we barely got any snow. I I chose another reason was because I like colder weather. Yeah. I I didn't apply to any southern schools, mm-hmm. so it was it was like northern Pennsylvania. I thought, oh, maybe we'll get some more. Some more cold weather, but no. Well, as a Syracuse guy, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm more were. of the same. Like, I like my cold weather, too. Yeah. But it was a mild winter, to be fair. Like, I'm sure it usually it comes in, like, waves, like, every other year. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of snow this year. So, for you and I, it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, not really. It's going to be awful, especially because we have to We don't have to shovel, guys. though, so that's good. That's a blessing, yeah. But watch, when we're home for winter break, that's when all the big <laughs> snowstorms gonna are going to come. Yeah. And just want to make sure you lived on campus your freshman year, right? Yes, yeah. How were the dorm halls? Where would you live? I mean, what, um, what was your living situation like? So it was, it was like, I guess like a double. I don't know what to like call it. Like a traditional, a traditional double. dorm yeah. room. It was me and my roommate. He's from Hundred and Central, so New you know Jersey that. school. New Jersey. He's friends with Spencer Day. Okay. So we kind of connected. They're, yeah. They're friends on the shore, and we like. We got along really well the whole year. Like we never fought about anything. Like oh, I've, really? I've heard horror stories about so a lot, about yeah. them and about roommates, and we just got along really well. But the dorm room itself and the dorm hall, we I was in the largest hall on campus. It houses 127 people. Mm-hmm. My RA was chill, which was good. Yeah, he, he did not really care about much. He's he was a sophomore, so. Kind of still understood our... He gets what goes on in freshman dorms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we didn't really talk to anyone else on our in our hall. Yeah. We were in a corner, which actually was better because... So usually there was like a... You can't really see. On the, <laughs> but there was like a door in the middle. And usually there's two... Not cabinets. Like closets. Dressers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for us, the door was on the side and we had one. So technically it was a bigger space because you got rid of Okay, the, yeah. So you got really lucky with yeah, that. Yeah, we got lucky with a bigger kind of, I guess, what, like four square feet bigger. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know. Everything counts. I mean, those dorm rooms can get pretty tiny. Yeah, we used to have people over a lot. So. Yeah, and you said you got along with your roommate the entire year, which, it, you know, a lot of people, they get along, but they more so coexist instead of being friends. Exactly, yeah. Were you more so like... 
good friends with him? And are, do you have any advice for someone who's going into college just to get along with their roommate? Really, uh, I made sure he had a personality. That was like <laughs> I guess the I'll one ask. Thing. Did you did you like, choose your roommate or was it random? Yeah. So like as I said, Spencer kind of put us. He like introduced us, but then like I met I met with him like before we kind of made the decision like just say hi and stuff yeah. and like very he's a very personable kid like he's smart keeps us like me and him we keep each other you know rounded rounded responsible ex- exactly responsible so he he didn't bring me down by any means but mm-hmm. we knew how to go out have a good time yeah. and he plays hockey too so okay. we're all on the team on the together. club team yeah yeah, yeah. yep so that, that that I would assume that definitely helped too, and that kind of is a perfect transition to my what I was going to ask next, which is you said you didn't talk to many kids in your hall. I didn't either. I got lucky and I made my friends through those those welcome week events. Did well, I guess first of all, did you guys have any of those? Like get on a campus early, meet everyone. For us, it was more hockey, just to hang out with a hockey team. Mm-hmm. A smaller school. I this is like one of the negatives of the smaller school. I. I'd say a bigger school has more events on campus yes. and more places to go around the school. Yeah. Scranton, they have like a pep rally for like the Like a the high NCAA. school kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know how many people went to that. Did you I go mean, to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> like it was on a Friday night. Like I'm not going to that. It's, it's very just fair. Not, it's yeah. not for, it wasn't for me. Like, and I, I don't know. I don't know the crowd going to that. Like, yeah. I don't know if there were people I'd be like. Any... Willing to hang out yeah. with but people I met, they were more through like going out mm-hmm. and then of course the hockey team, like my group, my friend my guy friend group yeah. is all the, the guys on the team. And then we met some girls there through some of the kids because they're all from Delco. I don't know if you know what Delco Delaware is. Delaware County, yes. yeah, Philadelphia area. They're, they're all f- the Philly fans, like <laughs> disgusting. I was gonna yeah. say Rowan with Matt Paris on yesterday we talked about Philly fans. No, no one likes them unless Not you're from at there. All. I but was so happy when they lost <laughs> the Super Bowl, Bowl and the oh World Series. It was, it was thank amazing. goodness they didn't win either of those. <laughs> but from what you're telling me, you kind of met your friends. I don't want to say through through luck, because that's kind of how everyone meets people. But really, just by putting yourself out there, I guess is a better yeah. way to put it. It, it definitely lucky, like de- lucky in the sense of the people that I met are mm-hmm. good people. Yeah, you know, and and I'm going into this next year with friends because, like, I damn well couldn't have yeah you know so the it's, same it's thing good. that yeah it's good to have a close friend group you know absolutely because either right you could either have no friends that's an option i, I think most people who put themselves out there that's not going to be right if you're listening and you're an outgoing person you make an effort to know people they're gonna you're gonna get the same energy there's gonna be a group of people it might take a little while but they'll come back and they'll be your friends but the one that's worse is a lot of people go into college they find a group of people in the first week and they're maybe not the best influences and it brings, like you said, it brings them down. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to hear that you didn't get brought down by your roommate or any of your friends. Yeah. And you talked about going out in Scranton. The city of Scranton itself, is there anything to do, like, parties-wise, bars-wise? Can you get into a bar under the age of 21? <laughs> I don't mean to incriminate you, but not from personal experience, but from what you've heard. So let's say I'm 21 New Jersey. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just to say that. So, so Scranton, not a city. But it's not a suburban area. It's like one it's, of those Rust Belt cities. It's a small metropolitan mm-hmm. area. Like, yeah. not New York City. Maybe a Syracuse. It's, it's a like smaller it's a smaller Syracuse. Syracuse. That's the perfect way to describe the, it. The, the, the university runs a city is, okay. is really the... If there was no university, there'd be no Scranton. Mm-hmm. Or it would be just, like, run down even more. But, so, the off-campus housing is literally right next to the campus... Mm-hmm. So it's a two minute walk to where we go, and the bar, the 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 bar that I go to, that's like it's right behind the campus. It's it's all the, you know, freshmen, sophomores, yeah. some of the juniors, underclassmen, we'll underclassmen bar, we'll put it. bar. Yeah. and then there's like a, more of like a there. It's again, it's Scranton, yeah. so not like a Miami club, but more of a <laughs> club type. Yeah, bar. It's it's. I like it. It's more fun. The drinks are more expensive, but I if mean, if you have a better time, if you have it's, a, it's, it's a better time. And then there's a lot other, a lot more other bars, but it's more like restaurant bars where the upperclassmen go. And yeah, they kind of keep that to themselves. You know, it makes sense. It, you yeah, gotta gatekeep I, a little bit. Exactly. They yeah. paid their dues before at the places you're going to. It's almost like a hierarchy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. But 
you said that at Scranton, there's no Greek life whatsoever. And yeah. it's a small school as well. So when it comes to parties that aren't bars or nightclubs, is there any sort of options? Like, does the do club sports like hockey have a house that throws parties? Yeah, so it's it's no Greek life, but so all the sports teams have houses. Okay. So like this year, hockey has four. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like grad house, junior house, senior house, and then like another one that like a few of the other people are just living in mm-hmm. with their friends. So definitely good to make connections because yes. a lot of them like like Sorrell's living at hockey house. And he doesn't. But he doesn't even play, doesn't on the even hockey, play team. hockey, so it's it's good to. I mean, not that I am meeting him now, but it's <laughs> it's like there's different people that go there, and and so towards the end of the year, we started hanging out with the soccer team a little more. They're mm-hmm. D three, so once they got out of the season, it was easier for them to go out. Like a lot of the Greek life, you don't get in. Yeah, you can't go this place. You can't go that place. This place is known for. You know, bad things. Spiking, yeah. and I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> there, none of that's really at Scranton. Like the rugby teams, like the has a worse reputation, and it's rugby. Like yeah, it figures, it figures. But like, it's it's just like such a good vibe. Like all everyone's real. Like you just go and go have a good time. And the city of Scranton itself, say it's like you know, it's not a Saturday or Friday or even Thursday night. Those are big at college too. If it's like a Friday afternoon or a Saturday or even a lazy Sunday, is there anything to do in Scranton or the surrounding areas? I don't know. Because for me, it was go out the night before and wake up at 12. Yeah, so. that, that's most kids. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few restaurants that we went to. I'm trying to look here. Whatever. Down. A lot of it, too, because my hockey season goes from August to February. So it's a long It's a long time. season. Yeah. So it was really hockey, hockey, hockey. Yeah. But we we would go out restaurants. There's a lake, Lake Scranton. Yes. Near the, there's like cliff jumping. I don't think you're supposed to go. We haven't gone yet, but it looks pretty fun. Yeah. So there's stuff to do. It's just you have to kind of pick your spots because some of the areas are not very good. Yeah. Like um, any city. Yeah. No. Definitely. But there's definitely stuff to do. There, there's like a field you could go play soccer or whatever. Yeah. Like so. So stuff there's like, like if you know if you if you're not a big drinker, not a big partier, you know. Lights there's are stuff out by to midnight. do. Yeah. Well, you, you could still. I mean, there's other people who are going to be like that, right? So yeah. you could you could find your your group and hang out, whatever you want to do. You know. Absolutely, and that's a great point. And kind of going off of that, something you said before that really stuck out to me is that at Scranton, everyone's genuine, everyone's real. What is the average University of Scranton student like? And do you see do you see yourself as an average Scranton student? I would say that I'm I'm pretty. I'm pretty average Scranton student. I'm, I'd say I'm down to earth. Like I'm not one to like brag about anything. Yeah. You know? So that's really what it is. It's it's everyone's like very inviting, very genuine. Like you said, down to earth. Like just going off of other schools, you know, just like ingenuine, like just like preppy, preppy, like pe- frat boy type yeah. of people. Like there's not you don't much really that get that. Scranton. No, you don't really get that. The base baseball team could be here and there, but. They're like the best team on campus, so they think they're, <laughs> they're so entitled. They're entitled, whatever. I get it. Like, if I was good at baseball too, I'd probably be like that. But <laughs> no, but no, it's just like it's it's just such a good vibe there. You know, no, I mean, n- nothing bad. It's like rainbows and sunshine all the time, is what I'm hearing at school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's definitely like, there's some nights like nothing's happening, and it's just like, oh, I'm so bored. Like, why did I choose to come here? Like, whatever. Because I know at another school it would be like. Every you, night, there's you have no on. option. You you have an option every night. Yeah, there's never not an option. You know, but that's another drawback of the small school, like you were saying earlier. But again, like everywhere, there there's humongous drawbacks about these no pun intended huge schools like Rutgers. You got to take a bus everywhere. Yeah, like Penn State, it's forty five minutes to walk across campus. All this stuff. Rhode Island, not even guaranteed housing for their next year. And are you living on campus next year or are yeah, you off campus? I'm in a quad this year. We it's you have to live on campus. They have a requirement for yeah, yeah, yeah. two years or three years? Two years. Okay. And then my junior year we we actually already have a house. So oh, you already signed a lease? We you have to get one like freshman year. Otherwise wow. you, you pass on your opportunity and you I think there are some on campus housing. It's like apartment style. Yeah. But it's it's not guaranteed. Like you you know, you might yeah. 
you, you should walk, you know. You might just get stuck in a dorm room like you were your freshman year. Yeah, exactly. So, but the quad is going to be better. I think it's going to be something around this size with a bathroom and then another uh, same size room. Oh, like a living room kind like of thing. Like a living room, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, that's great. A lot of people love suites, and especially if you're with three other guys you know. Yep. It's really, I mean, I think it's better than, because you have that extra, extra space. Like if you just want to get out of your room, you don't have to go to the library or like the gym. Exactly. You just go in that living room, put on the TV or play some Xbox and it's a great way to lay back. Yeah. But exactly. moving, moving more to the academic side, okay. University of Scranton, I remember I looked there. It was actually one of my final schools too. For whatever reason, I just kept going back to it. It, it really drew me in for some reason. There was something about it. I think part of it was the academics. Yeah. I don't want to say it's an overlooked school, but a lot of people don't give it the credit where it's due. And the first thing I want to ask is about the professors. Like, are your professors good, especially, right, in business? Like, what's the average class size? Is what, What's your experience in the classroom so far at Scranton? So that was another thing. With the small school, you get smaller class sizes. I don't – I didn't never wanted a 200-person, 400-person lecture yeah. hall. Like, I just would not be able to pay attention. So it keeps you accountable when you're – when you know your professor and your professor knows your name and you're sitting there and they could see you. But every, I just can't say every professor I had was good, but most of them were good. My chem professor, I loved her. She was, she was good. I didn't do very well in, in chem, but <laughs> she was, was a good professor. She was a good professor. I can't blame it on her. You know, it was just hard material. Yeah. But a few of them, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, it's everywhere. You get the few that have the heavy accent and they're still wearing a mask, yeah. which I don't have anything. Of, but it's just hard to understand. It's, it's hard to understand yeah. them, you know. And I would go up to just ask them after class a few questions. But I, it's easier for me to take notes while they're lecturing to me than to go up after yeah. and ask. But it's kind of whatever. Yeah. Um, my classes were good. There was a few like bullshit ones like gen ed classes that you had to take yeah yeah. like what were some of those like- so my math i had to take a math placement test <laughs> and i like placed basically in like an algebra two. Oh, what did you you already took that in high school right <laughs> yes yeah i took that and pre-calc so my first my first semester was at algebra two and my second was pre-calc and i got a's in both of those classes because like, you already knew the material yeah i know i stuff. never had to study like yeah. it was so easy and then this upcoming one, I'm taking calc, but besides the point. Yeah. The the math department isn't very good, but the the business classes, they were kind of like, I guess, like ex- learn the basics of Excel, yeah. stuff like that. Like useful stuff, I guess. And your professors, like, again, you get good and bad professors no matter where you are. But at Scranton, especially with small class sizes, were they accepting people? Like, were they responsive? If, say, you were sick or you had a... Ho- a hockey game, because that's a great example, something that's specific to you and a lot of other athletes. Say you message them a week before or whatever, that you have a game and you're going to miss class. Were they accommodating? Like, how, how'd that work, really? I So I had a late class on a Friday, second semester, I think. Okay. And I had playoffs for hockey. And I think I emailed the professor, like, three days before. Like, hey, I have a game. Any chance I could just, like, submit my work to you and just – skip class they yeah. were like yeah whatever <laughs> like it, it's very like like they want you there obviously yes it's and and it's mandatory attendance is that like a university-wide policy no it's not policy but most of the freshman 100 class teachers expect you to be there it was it was mandatory attendance but like you could get off not going like yeah a lot of the teachers had you can miss three classes after that you get like grade deduction. Okay, like miss through classes without an excuse. Like if you just yeah, slept unex- in and you just want to yeah do whatever with your day. Yeah, and not exactly. Class. My okay. my chem was more. It was six days, you can miss, but it was included with six days. Like okay, excused and unexcused. Okay, six, six days. so it's really three and three if yeah. you want to break it up that way. But I mean, chem for me at least it wasn't very easy, so I couldn't miss yeah. even if I was sick. I'd kind of have to go to that you but know? a class like a pre-calc or an algebra two it was easy you could just kind of you know if you're not feeling great one day you just want to do something else yeah you could just skip I, it i got my money's worth i'd say it's not like i was just there to skip class you yeah know? It i was, mean it was good you're there to, you're there to do I'm school there to, exactly not, just i'm there to, to learn and, and that's <laughs> honestly like when kids perpetually repeatedly skip class like not if you're sick but if you're just Going out every I don't single night. I feel like it, or I'm on a boat, or something like that. <laughs> I'm on like, a boat. We're definitely so not doing dumb. that in February in Syracuse or Scranton. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Down south, maybe. But. <laughs> 
But it's really it's like it's what you're paying for. The whole yeah. point of college is not to part. Well, yes, like that's obviously May, a fun. Well, part. the huge thing I tell my mom this. She's like, "Why don't you take a step back, focus more on academics?" Which I had a fine GPA, like whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, the whole point of college is get a good education. Mm-hmm. But I'd say even bigger than that is make connections, yeah. and that's the whole social life aspect yes. of it. Going out, you know, just talking to new people in classes, whatever it is. But it's it's huge the whole making connections because if you have no connections, it's hard to go anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are so many. Right, I work at Jersey Bakers of summer. I've shared that zero times on this podcast because it, it has nothing to do with college. But one of my friends who works there with me, he wants to be an auto mechanic, and some guy came in wearing like a BMW shirt. Started talking to him and he goes, yeah, I, I own, I own like a, not own, but I work at this BMW dealership. Like, how about you come in and apply for a job? I mean, it's stuff like that. And at college, that happens so much more often. And does, does Scranton itself, like not just the kids who go there, because you'll find plenty of connections just through that. But does the university have like any sort of alumni connections, networking? How, how does that work at Scranton? At the beginning of the year, I think they did like a, I, I think, it, I don't know if it was called career day, but it, they had like Bank of America, like big companies come in mm-hmm. kind of fill the gym yeah and we got to go and talk to them you know dress formally yeah. whatever the alumni i've heard i haven't really looked into jobs or anything it makes now. sense it you're makes, only or, a sophomore yeah yeah but i've heard the alumni is great like very make donations and offer jobs and stuff like that yeah so that's good and then we for hockey we actually have an alumni day in the spring like specifically for former hockey players at scranton exactly and they come back okay that's really cool yeah 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 so it was nice to talk to them uh, like people graduating in 09 were there so wow like, so even dating back almost 15 years yeah it was nuts that i mean it's i think once once you graduate from scranton it's like like I've heard from people like before I, before I went there, yeah. it's almost like a cult. <laughs> like, like it's just like, like, oh, it was the best place, like the best experience, whatever yeah. you know. So, I mean, I hopefully I'll be saying that towards the end. But yeah, I've heard the alumni is great. Yeah, and clearly, like obviously, that's not something you've tapped into. You don't need to tap into right now. But usually, schools, especially like Scranton, that are private, that's the biggest thing. People go there a lot of times with money, and that means a lot of times they leave getting money, and that yeah. gives you a connection to a usually a great high paying job. Yeah. And especially like you're saying, if the alumni are passionate, it means they're just more likely to come back and give other Scranton future graduates a job too. Yeah, which is great to hear. And something a little more controversial that I always love to talk about on this show is the dining options and the dining halls at a given college. Scranton, just, just give me your thoughts, Tommy. I would argue. That Scranton is a top 75 dining hall, dining hall, food, whatever you want to call it, in the, in America. That's pretty high. I would say so. As a small school, I mean, so we have, this is where it gets controversial. Oh, because God. it's one, we have like one like building that's yeah. like the top floor is for like a buffet style, I guess, if you want to call mm-hmm. it. And the bottom floor, you got Chick-fil-A, um... Like a Chipotle, uh, like a Jersey Mike's, and then like a pasta and a pizza station. Yeah. And everything's made for you right in front of you. Nothing's like frozen, bring it in. Like at lunch, you see them chopping up the chicken for dinner. Oh, really? Stuff like that. Yeah. I it The food is so good. I, I mean, not not like a home-cooked meal like my grandma's They're still making, making it in bulk for 4,000 Exactly. They're still making it in bulk. They could use a, le- a little less oil, <laughs> so I'm not, you know, going back and just like it's coming right back out. But it's the it's all tasty and it's all fresh and it's all new. Like every single day, there's a new option. I think the only thing that they have is like on weekends, it's the same rotation. Yeah, like, it's an omelet which they make for you, and you get to pick what goes in. Okay, pancakes, French toast, waffles, maker, and then there's like. Chicken nuggets, chicken sandwich. Yeah. And then during the week, it's a burger. That's the only thing that stays consistent. And then everything else switches, like pasta, stuff like that. So it's almost like the only consistent thing is the inconsistency. But not the inconsistency in it being good or not, just it's, the items available. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. there's there's really an option for everyone. Yes, is what I'm definitely. Hearing. There's a even... vegan option if you're vegan. You know, there healthy options. There's everything. 
and in a small school. Yeah, especially too, because if you go to a big school, you know, it's forty thousand kids. Like, yeah, there's gonna be stuff for everyone just because they have the capital to do it, no matter what. But at Scranton, it, I think it's really impressive too, because they only have the student bodies around a little over four thousand, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yep, yep. So the fact they're doing it, making it, uh, you know, not just accessible but fresh for everyone and options for everyone is is great to hear. And honestly, like that's not what I expected to hear. Usually, small schools aren't always known for their dining. Yeah, no, that's that's the one thing on the tour that I remember they said that the food is good. I mean, it's it's not a UMass where they're bringing in their culinary students to, yeah. to chop up. That's just for a them, different breed. That's, UMass, that's crazy. Hands down, but, is the best food in the country. Yeah, but it's it's definitely good. Like I'm not I'm satisfied. You know, yeah. it's it's not bad. And off-campus dining options, right, if you just want to go out to eat one day. We talked about it a little bit before, but, you know, say you have 30 minutes, an hour in between class. Is there, like, any sort of, like, restaurants or fast food off-campus you could go and grab? It's more on-campus. Like, the – the we call it third and first. Third is the ba- the buffet. buffet, and then the first is, is a quick kind of grab-and-go yeah. option. There's kind of, like, a mini mart in there, too. Okay. I wouldn't say – I wouldn't go off-campus to get something quickly. Mm-hmm. That's more of like a weekend, like go sit down, get lunch with my friends. Type yeah, thing. that makes sense too. Especially because if you're gonna go out to eat, like and spend that money too, because mm-hmm. I I don't know how your meal plan worked. If you want to just touch on that before. So not the meal plan, but I would I will say everything in Scranton is cheaper than back here in Jersey. Yes, a hundred percent. Because a sandwich here, I'm just saying, is like fifteen dollars. Yeah, like a a good sandwich yeah. is fifteen dollars. There was like eight. Oh wow! So you're really shaving off some 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 money. So there. I mean, you'll you'll save some money by going exactly. out too. Yeah. And, but again, like even if you are going out, a lot of times like it's nice to go out with other people, so it's a social event too. Especially if like, you know, it's like a, a Friday at four, you're just hanging out before you go out or like do whatever. It's nice to go out, but if you're like I, I don't I, I'm a pretty cheap guy. I don't like spending money when I don't have a reason. So, right. The meal plan I always took advantage of my freshman year. Yeah. Uh, did you do the same? And then also, how did your meal plan work? Like, I know most colleges have unlimited swipes, some sort of thing like that for freshmen. Was it the same at Scranton? Yeah, so we had unlimited. And then we had, um, for every meal, if you didn't want to go up to the buffet, you could just do a, um, like a meal swipe downstairs, which was like seven twenty. It paid for seven twenty five. dollars Okay. And if you went over, it would be, we had like flex which is you could spend it, I think you could spend it anywhere because there's Flex and there's Royal. I didn't, I never did Royal. I yeah. did Flex. I I went to the, like, the Mini Mart, got stuff there, went to First, got stuff there. Like, yeah. It, you could use it wherever. But the Unlimited was good because, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> the Unlimited was good because I would just go up and swipe in and yeah. just get whatever I wanted. Yeah, and you know, as many times as, as you wanted to. Because you could, like, finish your meal and be like, ah. I'm still hungry. You can <laughs> just, just go back going. in and get more food. Yeah, yeah. Which that was my favorite part too. Or like, I'd I'd want like a snack, like middle of the day, or like I get done with a test and it's like, I don't know, eleven in the morning, and I'm not hungry for lunch, but I like want an ice cream. And the dining <laughs> yeah. hall, it's you know you don't you don't make ice cream fresh. At least Syracuse definitely doesn't make ice cream fresh. <laughs> yeah. I would just go in, swipe my card, and you know I'd get an ice cream. That was the best feeling in the world. And I know you've already touched on how the the small intimate campus of Scranton. But from a pure aesthetic standpoint, right, walking around campus, is it pretty? And I guess what's the furthest walk as well? Because you said from your dorm room to your class, it was about five to ten minutes. Is that the same? Is that consistent throughout campus? Yeah, so I'll start with the aesthetics. Yes. The, they're like, I guess they're like renovating the look of the campus right now to okay. make it look more modern. There's definitely a few buildings that are like, I guess, 90-ish, yeah. like brick buildings that... I mean, they still look nice. Like, it's not like they're rotting from the inside. <laughs> yeah. They're still nice. Uh, every building they did, they've already done, like, refinished the inside. They're okay. just doing the outside now. Gotcha. Our gym is kind of old. Like, the floor is, like, you could tell when a, a gym floor is, like, old, I guess. Like, the the grease has built up oh, and yeah. the cracks a yeah. little bit too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. But, like, the main building, the science building, is totally, like, Brand finished new. brand new it's 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 a good look you know the they the walkways are nice but they drive their trucks on the like the they're what? like stone yeah pathways p- pathways students. exactly yeah. but they drive their trucks on it so i don't know if you have yik yak 
Yeah, you know what that is? yeah, the anonymous posting app. Yes. Yeah. So on Yik Yak, it was the funniest for me. It was funny. I guess you kind of <laughs> don't know. I hate to be that guy, but uh, <laughs> it's the one person was like, it was like a cycle. Scranton, re redo the 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 walkway. Yeah. Drive their trucks. Redo the walkway. Drive their trucks. Re- it 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 gets me so mad because they all like crack. But then they continue to just drive their trucks on on it for no reason. (laughs) That's like the easiest way to put wear and tear. I know. Like, no one's that heavy. Like, (laughs) if you just left it alone, it would be fine. But whatever. It's something that's, like, I guess unique to Scranton, too, because there's really no roads that go through campus. A lot of other big campuses, even Syracuse, there's one or two roads that go through it. And, you know, the trucks, the landscapers, whatnot, maintenance people can go on that. I guess they're too lazy to walk at Scranton. That's the only <laughs> thing I, I could come up with for, for this I don't know if it's, if it's like the landscapers, like just they don't care. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's it's funny to me because they're, they're just giving themselves more work. Yeah. At this point, I'm surprised the university hasn't like, I guess <laughs> it is the university stop, themselves. Right? It is, but I don't know. It's not me. And then one thing I forgot to ask about just the student life in general where do, where are most of the students from? Because I know you're you're obviously from New Jersey. We grew up together. Are most kids from New Jersey, like New York, Pennsylvania, that area, or do they come from all over? I think I forget the percentage, but I think it was the most was New York, and then New Jersey, or I don't know. It was it was like a third from each. I would say the make tri-state. up the tri-state area makes up like seventy five percent, or or to eighty percent. My RA actually was from Arizona. Oh, that's which random. Right? I. I know. I was like, why are you here? <laughs> like, how did you hear about it? But there's definitely, like, a few, like, needle in a haystack, like, from Michigan or... Bumblefuck know, like, nowhere. Exactly. Like, I I don't know why you're here, but definitely Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, that was the most. Yeah, it makes sense, too, because Scranton, again, it's small. Right? A lot of times, like, schools that have kids that come from all over that aren't, like, a Notre Dame or like a Virginia that are academically like well known around the world. They got those big sports teams. Like you got people coming from up north, like going to Alabama, yeah, or or somewhere like that. And personally, like no hate to any Southern schools. I'm not the biggest fan of Southern schools, but to me, it's just like, well, you know, you see that team on TV every single Saturday. Yeah. That's you know part of the reason why you're probably going there. And Scranton obviously doesn't have that pull, so it makes sense that every kid is kind of from close to local, home. Yeah. yeah, or not local, but near. Yeah, know. but even even then, like, you get to see all like you get to see all your friends over break. It, at least you have the option to, because at Syracuse, so many kids are from California or all over. Luckily, my friends are from the Northeast, but it would just suck. Like, yeah, I I I mean, I haven't seen my friends this year, this summer. I think it's just because I, I'm busy, busy and everyone's yeah. busy. Um. But we have the option. Like over winter break, we all kind of got together. Yeah. Um, it's it's better to have the option than not. You know. Yeah. Like Dante goes to Ole Miss, and all his friends are from the South. He hasn't seen any. He of hasn't them. seen it, and he doesn't unless he's going to travel. He's not going to. And right now, man, plane tickets, gas, everything's expensive. Yeah. And you know, it's just so much easier if your friends. You know, four hour, four hour, maybe not even like I have a friend in Connecticut, hour hour drive or Philly, hour and a half drive from home. So much easier compared to like a three, four hour flight. Yeah. But it is what it is. Everyone loves what they love. We're we're two good exactly. northern boys. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but and there's one final thing I want to talk about before we go more into the hockey, and that's Scranicon. I mean, just what is that? It seems like just such a cool <laughs> tradition to be a part of. To answer a question with a question, where yeah. did you hear about it? I saw it all over social media, right? Because there's a ton of talk kind of kids from our hometown of Caldwell that go to Scranton. So I'll always see it and I'm just like, wow. A lot okay. of Santas running around at the <laughs> University of Scranton. Yeah, so it's it's a, the Christmas celebration, I okay. guess to call it. I mean, I don't know if you saw like a Fairfield, they kind of put it on the beach yeah. type of thing. Yeah. It's essentially the same thing, just not on the beach. So it's our, the hockey house lot with rugby and lacrosse. We all kind of, we share the same lot. And then it's like all over, every, like everyone knows to go there. Yeah. It's a earlier start, so it just goes for a longer time. Yeah. I don't know. It was. It's like I guess it's a regular party, 
but it's just like just Christmas themed. It's Christmas themed, and it makes it so much better. I was about to say, and like, I, I wore a onesie. Like, <laughs> I'll send you a picture of that. I was like, about to say, I cannot wait <laughs> to see you in a onesie, man. I can't even picture that. It was really fun. But yeah, I I love those traditions because every college right has something unique about it. And Scranton, that's definitely one. You know, one of it. Are there any other traditions at Scranton? There, a bigger one, I'd say, is I didn't go to it. What it was like a St. Patty's Day. I forget, oh yeah. I forget what what the actual name for it is. But there's a name for it. I I went away for spring break, so I wasn't able to go. Okay. But it was like, I think the alumni come back for that. Oh, it's that And big. like the people of Scranton come and. Like, there's an actual parade that goes down the main road there. Mm-hmm. So, like, they got the ho- the police on horses. Like, it's an actual event. Yeah. And then off campus, like, on the housing part, they have, like, green beer and, you know, have, have a good time. St. Patrick's Day Sam- fun. Exactly. And yeah. that, again, St. Patrick's Day, <clears throat> probably it's, one of the best It's America's reason for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those. That and just sports in general. And I guess not liking your family is probably a big <laughs> reason up there. <laughs> but hockey, like I said, sports are a big reason to drink. I'm going to assume, all right, again, you're not 21, I'm not 21, so we don't partake in any of that. Mm-hmm. But hockey itself, the first thing I want to ask is about the schedule and scheduling your classes. How does that work? Do you get priority and do you have the schedule for your hockey stuff beforehand so you could kind of work around that? Just what, what's it like making your schedule while also juggling a sports schedule on top of that. So since we're club, it's it's not worked into our schedule. Mm-hmm. So we kind of we uh, of course we make our own schedules. Uh, right now I'm taking or I'm going to take and I took this last semester 17 and a half credits. Okay. So it's definitely a lot. The half is cuz the lab is one and a half. Okay. But uh, so our practices are late. So I we just try to not schedule early classes. Okay. Which, I mean, I'm going to have to deal with it because 17 and a half, I have to work it into my schedule somehow. Yeah. So, it's it's just kind of like whatever. Like, we we try to not to schedule games on, on Fridays, but sometimes it's like playoffs is on starts on Friday. Okay. So, it's just like, you know. It, it is it's, what it is. It is what it is, you know. You got to deal with it, especially if someone like yourself, chemistry, business. You gotta yeah. deal with it. There's stuff yeah. you gotta do. Not everyone's a business major that can just party. Exactly. Well, I know you're well, part. It's, half, it's half a business. very, it's a very interesting major. Yeah. If you want to touch on more of that too. Yeah. Not to go off a limb, but so my dad, not, not, I'd say this influence. My dad is works in corporate for for Century Twenty One Real Estate. Yeah. And then my mom works at Novartis Pharmaceutical Company, okay. like for research and stuff like that. So I kind of put. The two together, chemistry, yeah, business. business, and I actually like chemistry. Like it's 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 hard. It's stuff. hard as hell, but I like it. like it's so interesting to me. Yeah, bio I hate. And, I was not a big fan and of it. Physics either. I hate too. It's physics is too much math. <laughs> I have to take orgo this upcoming semester, which I'm I'm hoping I like, even though it's going to be harder. I like more than gen chem. Yeah, because gen gen chem was a lot of math and like. It's physics based chemistry, which I don't like that. But so that's the chemistry. It's it's more like it's a general chemistry and the business. You take a lot of different courses. Like I'm gonna be taking accounting, okay. marketing stuff like that, just yeah. to get a touch. And then I'm gonna have to do like a concentration or a minor in another business. Okay, so it really is a combination too. And it I is. find that really cool. How both your parents influence that. Mm-hmm. And what's something you you'd want to do with? The, your chemistry business degree i'm still that i'm still very undecided that's yeah. why it might change it, it could very well change within within the next three months yeah right now pharmaceutical sales is like kind of where i'd go with that yeah i i don't really like big pharma but that's where the money is yeah you know you so, gotta chase the bag exactly you gotta get the money so that's like one of the options i mean there's so many options with i could use my business, I could use my chemistry. chemistry or I could do both and just work on the business side of a chemistry business. Yeah. There's all different types of chemistry stuff like nuclear weapons or <laughs> forensics or research. There's anything. You yeah. Know? It, it's very hard to tell where I'd end up. And the great thing with your major is that it's it's so broad mm-hmm. and not, not in a bad way where like there's nothing you can do. It's a way where like you could you could play around with it in so many ways. Yeah. Where 
you don't have to be set on one career, and if that doesn't work out, you have nothing else. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You have so many backup plans options. and so many options that really anything can work out. And going back to the hockey, all right, you, the schedule, you kind of have to work it in. And and you said it it could be it could suck sometimes. Yeah, it could suck. I mean, last year we'd have a practice. Our our coach, he's very like it's an actual coach. It's not like a just a random a kid. kid. Yeah. He's like thirty from Binghamton, so he's traveling an hour. So he's oh, very wow. he's very committed to the yeah. team. So he expect us to be as well. So we have to be to practice like hour and a half, two hours early to wow. warm up. Which I'm not a big fan of because I never did that in my life. Yeah. So I don't really need to warm up for a practice, yeah. but I mean, other people might. So it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Good to get in with the team yeah. if I'm not seeing them Absolutely. during the day. But so say practice was what like 10 leave at 7 30 and i wouldn't get home until like 12 oh wow so it's like an almost a five hour type of thing event yeah and that's not including like a film if we have film yeah. that's another hour so sometimes i'd be getting home really late and having to wake up it sucked but it was like again it is what it is i i love playing hockey so it's whatever and that's what i was about to say if you're doing something you love it, it's all gonna be worth it yeah and like you said interested in chemistry and business and hockey I mean, if you hated those three things, you know, it, it wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, yeah. Because because you love all those things, presumably. I mean, you've said you do. Yeah. It makes it such a great experience. And my my next question, too, which I'm curious about, is were there tryouts for the team, first of all? And then did you have – are there fees they have to pay? So there – I mean, there. I think this year there's going to be tryouts because we – we have, like, 12 new kids coming in. Okay. So it's going to exceed the limit that we could have on a roster. Yeah. Last year, there wasn't everyone made the team, but there were, like, practice squad, I guess. Like, yeah. people who never played a game. Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to be able to have played in every game. Our coach is very, like, if you're not playing well, you're not playing at all. Okay. And if you're having a great game, you're playing. Yeah. So, it was, even if I was dressing, sometimes I wasn't playing. Yeah. Towards the end of the season, I played, I got more respect from the coach, yeah. so I'd play a lot more, but there was... I felt bad, but there are fees. It's last year. I think it was twenty two hundred. And is that just because it's hockey, or is that every club sport? I don't know. Like the dance team. Yeah. They. I. I don't know if they pay. They went to like Disney. Oh wow. So I think it, they fundraised a lot and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which we fundraised too. But we get like a stipend, I guess, from the university. From the university, yeah. eight thousand dollars. It's not enough for hockey. No, not nearly. Like ice time is crazy, and we yeah. bus places so. But I felt bad because everyone had to pay it, no matter if you played or paid or uh, played or not. Played or not. Oh yeah. And some people didn't play, so they so just paid just, that for nothing or for practice. Yeah. But you know, it's it's crazy. But you gotta love the sport, you know. Yeah, and I, I mean that makes sense. And luckily enough, like you said, you were able to play, and you know, going into your sophomore year, you know, presumably play more, and obviously yeah. more and more and more. And I, being in the organization helps too. And you said you bus places. How often do you travel for games? And I mean, I guess what's the coolest place you went? And I mean, and just everything about games too. Like how many have a week? Like I don't play a club sport. I know a lot of people don't, but might be interested. How does it work with hockey? So hockey, we get two, one to three games, usually two on weekends. Cool places. Last year we, I wouldn't say there was any like really cool. We played at UPenn's arena, which they used to be, I think division. And it's like a big arena. Yeah. In in pencil in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia. Right? yeah. So that was cool, but I mean, nothing really like exciting. It was all like league games. I mean, the farthest we traveled was Stockton, which I'd is still it's kind a of far a hike drive from it's four Scranton. hours, I think. Yeah, that's pretty bus. far. So, like that was the longest. I'm trying to think. Did you stay over at, like a hotel or anything for that, or was it you go there and you come go, right back? Well, for that, I went home. Okay. And then I just went there myself. Yeah. Which I had the luxury of doing that. We played Seton Hall, which was at Cody Arena. Oh, so your, I, your home arena exactly, back from Exactly, from, from West Essex Knights. So <laughs> I just got to be driving to those types of places. But this year, we're playing Cornell. So you're going up to Ithaca. We're going up there, but they we're playing on their D1's rink, oh, which so is, that's going to be a cool experience. And they're, they're a good Division One hockey program, Yes, right? definitely. But, I mean, we're not playing their D1 I mean, Yeah, team, yeah, yeah. I... It, it's going to be a cool experience, you know. This year we're playing a lot new, more different teams. Mm-hmm. We're playing 
Marist, Cornell, Drexel. So we're trying to mix it up, you yeah. know, get get our name out there more. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, I mean, it's very exciting. And even then, like, I find as a college student, right, you don't have a car at Scranton, right? Or, or do you? No, I can, but I, I'm not. It, yeah. There's no need. No, I, I agree, especially with the hockey team. But I'd be on campus for like weeks on end. You don't go anywhere. And it's just so nice to have the luxury of like leaving and going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I think hockey also, besides that, also allows you the access to like new cities. Like I know that Poughkeepsie like isn't really like the nicest city. Yeah. But I think it's always nice to see somewhere new. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen the Mayor's campus. It's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So it, if I'm gonna be able to see new sites you know why not yeah and i always you know as we begin to wrap up here i always ask a couple questions at the end the first one is what are some things you do for fun at college right i know you, you go out with the hockey team and and you know you, you don't go to like scranton yourself but a lot of kids do i mean what else that you haven't shared if, if there's anything there's definitely stuff to do on campus like they have like a lot of intramural sports i ended up being like a umpire for softball. Did you get paid for that? It's a long story. <laughs> At the end of it, no, I did not. <laughs> but I was supposed to. I'm not gonna go into that because no, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just it it will get me mad. But um, I did that. There's a lot of intramurals. Like, I mean, at a bigger school, there's gonna be more. But yeah. but there's a ton for for everyone. There's something for everyone, and then. They always have, like, a yoga class. Okay. Like, cycle class, like, stuff like that. Stuff to keep active. Yeah, if you're not playing a sport or something. Or, like, yoga, I'm probably going to go to. I I know a few of the guys on the hockey team did. It's yeah. good to stay. Flex. And there's, like, the basketball gym. Like, you could just go in the gym. You could just go there. Shoot so, around, shoot yeah. some hoops, play some pickup games. Yeah, and working out, I do that. Yeah, and it seems like a great mix, yeah. especially of stuff. Like, you're obviously a guy that keeps active just from hockey, but... Mm-hmm. Without, I mean, there's opportunities, I guess, besides the umpiring thing, <laughs> to get paid on campus. <laughs> yes, there, there's, there's a lot of. I don't know if it's if it technically qualifies for as financial aid, but like they take it off. They your tuition take it off your you tuition, were, yeah, yeah, which is essentially like getting paid. Yeah, exactly. Student loans are not fun. I mean, that's a different discussion for a different type of podcast. For but... for a different like that's just it has nothing to do with Scranton. Oh, it's, mess. It's, it's that's mess. definitely not Scranton specific, yeah, but. No. Really, my favorite question that I always say for the end is, what's one sentence to describe Scranton? So I saw that. I didn't put one down because I, it's hard. Like, I don't want it to be, like, quirky. I don't know. Like, the realest place that you could be. Like, like you said with the real Everyone's so genuine. Like, it's it's just, it's an honest place. I don't know if that makes sense. Down to earth like, people. Down-earth. They're not just trying to backstab you. Yeah, and everything's priced well as a college student. Yeah. You're going to want that. Like, oh, you're yeah. not going to want to be spending $15 on a sandwich on every a day. Sandwich. Like, sandwiches got expensive. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just. It's grand. You know? <laughs> it's grand. It's the right place for you. It's definitely the right place for a lot of people. Exactly. It, on... But that's the thing. Not a lot of people will know that. Because yeah. it's like, oh, Scranton, like, small school, they're not going to want to. People write it off. Yeah. And you're saying but they shouldn't. They should not do that. I I mean, it's a small school, like, I guess kind of like it's... It's, it's like the size of, like, a Fairfield or a Providence. 4,000 like yeah. undergrad. It's just like, it's a great place to be, you know? Yeah. And Tommy, I mean, before we, we end, is there anything else you want to add about Scranton or just some advice about college in general, anyone going into the application process? Definitely don't wait to get your applications done. There was a few that I was, like, kind of pushing to do. I did early action, but still, like, towards the end, I I didn't realize that some of them had the writing supplementals yeah. to do, and I was like, Ugh. Those but, are the worst. Yeah, you just want to be done at that point. Through high schools, they should be doing their college essay. Like, you should be getting your college essay done. But if they're test optional, definitely find out. Like, yeah. that was huge for me. I went test optional because my I didn't have very strong scores. So mm-hmm. just stuff like that. And Tommy, well, this is a great episode. I had a pleasure having you on. I hope you had a great time as well. And uh, I just want to wish you the best of luck your next three years at Scranton and beyond. So, yeah, you again. too. Thank Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.